once again to the daybreak show on Rock City 101.9 FM. Here in the city of Avecta, we are the voice of the people. Yes, we should say we are happy. Reports from the southeastern part of Nigeria and some parts of the north or the north is that things are gradually uh, getting back to normal states where coffee has been declared are reducing the number of times in which you have to be forced to stay in and markets in areas like Aba, Umaya are opening or Nisha and of course Port Harcourt are also getting back to what we can refer to as normal but it is not rule yet the tension is still there IPOB and his group are still talking fiercely and toughly, you may want to say, as the October 1st deadline from the different groups in the country approaches. The military, yes, says they will do their job, and the police have also said they will also enforce the laws. Even though this morning, report is saying that the President of the National Assembly, Bukola Saraki, is saying declaring IPOB or any other group as a terrorist group of Osiris them as it has been done now, did not pass through the normal process and therefore it's illegal. We'll continue to search for peace in our land there. That is why we have some eminent Nigerians online to look at the situation with the IPOB, the IPOB, the young people of Biabra, the social cultural angle uh, to it. I have uh, all the way uh, on phone in Kaduna. The spokesperson of the Iowa Consultative Forum, Malam Abubakar Biu. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Is Malam Ibrahim Biu? Ibrahim Biu. I apologize uh, once again. Yes, Malam Ibrahim Biu. And of course, uh, standing in Lagos is the president, uh, sorry, Afeni Ferry Renewal Group. Good morning, sir. Honorable Wali Oshun. Uh, I'm a uh, chairman. Oh, okay. Again, <laughs> apology, chairman, chairman, the Affair Ferry Renewal Group. We hope to be joined by the Eze Indigo of the Southwest, uh, High Chief Nathaniel Uzoma, uh, all the way from Ekiti. As soon as we are able to connect him, he will also join the conversation. But uh, first, um, Araji Bill. How, how far from your end, from your angle, has this IPOB issue divided Nigeria and Nigerians as ethnic groups? Well, first of all, we give thanks to the Almighty Allah for the peace we have witnessed in the last uh, couple of days following the uh, the crisis in the southeast, which uh, also affected most northerners in that area. Uh, as, as you were fully aware, we have had cases of uh, all sorts of rumors being circulated on the social media in order to provoke reprisal attacks on the southeasterners in the north. Thanks be to God, despite all the provocations, the insults, and whatever that was circulated, our people remain resolute, remain firm, remain accommodative, and uh, said no to this kind of uh, uh, agitations that will uh, cause repression attacks from the north. So, there has been relative peace, and in fact, as uh, uh, you are fully aware, uh, there has been demonstrations for peaceful coexistence where the houses were all. Uh, right, uh, uh, I'm sorry, just for a second, because uh, I also have joining us the uh, Eze Indigo of the Southwest, uh, right. which was a uh, high chief. And Natalia Uzoma, I'm just introducing him. He will also okay. listen to you. He's joining the conversation. Uh, good morning, Fine. sir. Good morning, sir. That's uh, not, that's not my. I, I'm the president of Alexandria, not West, not Alexandria. Okay.
President, you are Okay, another mix yes. of sorry. Yes. All right, yes, he's done it. The conversation just done. We have two other men online. We have the spokesperson of that consultative forum, uh, Malam Ibrahim Biu, and we also have the chairman of the Feni Ferry Renewal Group, Honorable Wale Oshun, uh, with us. Okay, uh, Alaji Biu, you were still talking on the effects. Yes, yeah, so you can see, despite all these problems. We uh, uh, have a relative peace, both in the north and also in the south east, where this problem uh, problems erupted. Mm, no uh, what I would say is let's continue to preach peace for coexistence among Nigerians. Let's also be accommodative. Let's also tolerate each other. Because, uh, you see, the way... We in the north accommodate all shades of Nigerians. We expect other Nigerians from the south to also accommodate us, uh, to show love, to show affection, to show that we are Nigerians. If an Igbo man can own property in Kaduna, let a Hausa man also own property in Inugu, in uh, Abekuta, in uh, uh, Port Harcourt. You know, I live like a Nigerian, so that will that will bring peace, that will bring understanding uh, among us. Oh, all right, 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 so far appears to be taking the position of an onlooker because it has not been directly affected. Um, is this so? And do you think, from where you are looking at events from, that the federal government of Nigeria is handling this issue appropriately? Well, I, 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 I think you are right. Let me say that the uh, Yoruba uh, people are going to be
YouTube my channel. Are you still there, sir? Yeah, I'm here. No. Really, do you think IPOB represents the Indigos in general, their actions? Well, uh, uh, before I answer your question, I will first of all uh, want to emphasize that the, the federal government uh, body language on the issue of uh, all these agitations here and there in the country does not show the sincerity because uh, the best approach to, to issues like this use of this agitation problem here and there. The best approach is dialogue. So you don't uh, you don't approach it with uh, with uh, this issue of a deployment of soldiers. Soldiers are not the best to, to, to settle issues. They are not the best approach. Okay, the, the IPOP of a thing, I am not saying that the activities are they are doing the will or the wish of but you cannot also say that uh, they are not making point on what they are saying. You know, uh, I believe Nigeria is a, is a big country, and uh, it is all this component that made up uh, Nigeria. When you say maybe this part, maybe because of uh, the, the the stand of the. The group called the airport, what they are saying is not good. You want to wipe them off. I'm telling you that will not solve any problem. That will even aggravate the problem the more. I have, like my brother from the north, he, he, he said that uh, that uh, that the northern people are accommodating. People, people also are accommodating. And I will tell you if you ask me. The people who promote unity in this country the most. I will tell you, the people are the, are the, are the, are the, the, the people that promote unity. As I'm talking to you now, I'm, I'm speaking from a city state. I have my properties here. Go to the east and tell me how many, how many northerners have properties there. Because you have property, you have made that place your second home. We don't want anything, anything uh, bad to happen to that place. Well, if ever anything like that happens, you start to lose. So, I've been in the forefront of the uh, for the unity of this country. So, but what we are saying is that we are being marginalized, and this that direction, the federal government is not looking into it, and our brothers from the north are not even doing anything about that. Why your brothers are crying that? This is you know, this uh, this sharing formula. The way you are doing is not good. Though. What you're supposed to do if you are uh, truly uh, your brother keeper? What you're supposed to do is to look into it and call the concerned people. And what these people are saying, you know, there's truth in it. So let us see what we can do so that we can live uh, uh, as one. No, all right, yeah, not chief. That, um, not, not, that, not that not that not that what they are saying is rubbish. Chief, and I you. That you want to you want to turn them into uh, to, to the terrorist group. There are forces under international and international laws, especially the Terrorism Prevention Act 2011, as oh. amended in 2015, to determine whether a group or is or Ch Ch Chief Nathaniel, can you? Uh, hello, Chief Nathaniel, because, uh, like yes. I said, there are three of you uh, listening, and I want to get the other reaction. Okay, uh, uh, Madam Bill, you are itching to say something. First and foremost, uh, let's talk about how we can bring about peace and harmony among Nigerians. I think that is the most important thing now. The issue of IPOP, uh, like you rightly said, does not represent the wishes or the aspirations of the Igbos at large. It's, it's just a question of maybe few discrepancies uh, that are trying to. Uh, uh, call for this uh, succession. But let's look at it uh, holistically. If now we are to take federal government and if you feel you really have been marginalized, let's now take how many appointments do you have as a zone vis a vis what we 
we have maybe in the northeast or north central, you will find that they are actually the same. So let's not try to talk about marginalization because this, during Jonathan's time, I don't think northerners complain of marginalization. And it was very clear that all the economic uh, portfolios in the federal government. How many states do you have in your political zone there? You can see how our people want peace. Our people were affected in the crisis in Aba, in uh, Umahia, and also in Oyemboye River State. But you can see our governors, five of them, you know, travel to the south, south, and south is in order to mediate, to dialogue, and to bring peace. I think that shows that we northerners, we are very, very accommodative. Okay, I'd like to give you hold on for a minute, please. No, oh, okay, hold on for you, say, continue. I, I need okay, to ask you. Let me say this point, please. And again, he said, if you go to any corner in this country, you will find a northerner, no matter the menial job he's doing. Even when you don't even expect it, you will find a northerner there, and they're selling tea, or selling soya, or just kind of menial jobs. So, northerners are equally enterprising, and you find them all over. Okay, uh, Honorable Osho. Hello, Honorable Wally Osho. Okay, now, you, you, have the, you had the opportunity of serving in the National Assembly and served as a principal officer, chief whip. This issue, you heard the two of them talk about a marginalization. Is any part of the country marginalizing the other? Because um, some people will say everybody is being marginalized up to the local government level. From your experience in the National yeah. Assembly, this issue of marginalization, how deep, how real it is in the country?
generalization is the way we use it freely. Everybody will feel my generalization. Let me go to Ogun State. Ogun State from 1979 to date, you had only Chief BC, who is an Asian woman that was governor of Ogun State. This is after you never had another Asian woman who became governor of Ogun State. It, was only, it has always been Igba, Igba, Igba. I don't know, maybe in 2019, you have an Asian uh, man that will be governor. So, if you go there, they will tell you also that they are marginalized. If you come to Kaduna State, the same kind of problem. If you go to Benue, the same kind of problem. If you go to Ogun State, my own state, you still have the same kind of problem. People feel they are marginalized. So, the issue of marginalization, I think, is all over. But first and foremost, Uh, the issue of the, the federal government as we have it today, or the state government as we have it today, is based on the 1999 constitution as amended. So, for anybody to say it was a Abacha constitution because he came from the north, then the people that we elected as our governors, as our senators, as our reps, are based on this constitution. So, there is no way you and me can now describe that constitution to the law when your own people are elected on the basis of that constitution as governors, as house of rest, and rep, and uh, as senators, and state assemblies. So, if anybody now wants a new constitution that we call it, uh, that uh, some people will say uh, is not military, how do we achieve that? We can only achieve that if we have a clause, maybe in our constitution, for referendum, or make use of our present elected members to effect changes in the constitution, or maybe bring another new constitution and promulgate it. Otherwise, okay. you and me, that we are not in the legislature, not in the executive, to effect these changes, I mean, in accordance with the procedure uh, or the process of making changes in our constitution. All right. Okay. Uh, Malabiu, I'm sorry because I have to manage this. I'm going to give the three of you two two uh, minutes. First, Honorable Oshun, from all that is being said now, it appears that the problem is not restructure or marginalization, but the pro the structure is how do we get power and who is holding the power? Is is this not so, Honorable Oshun? No, Constitution is for the people, it's written by the people, and it works for the people. So it is the better the better constitution is very inadequate and two hundred and representative of the values and aspirations of the people of that. They are then very selected to change it. How can we get that about where those sort of power? Because it's not 
Ocean, now Chief uh, Nathaniel. Huh? Uh, Chief Nathaniel, some people are of the opinion that the Igbo presidency, if the Igbo eventually got power, become the president, all this agitation and crisis will stop. True or false? Well, uh, uh, for Igbo presidency, is good because uh, uh, what is good for the ganga uh, for the goods is equally good for the ganga. So uh, Igbo president is good, but that will not solve the problem. The problem we have at hand now is problem of constitution. Our, our, our constitution is faulty. The federal government constitution is faulty, and there is every need to call the people together to write another constitution, not amendment. Because when you talk about amendment, it's the same people in the National Assembly where we have been already marginalized. We don't have equal representation with others. It's the same people that we will not call to amend. And those from the other, our brothers from the other side, they will use, still use that, uh, that power of numerical strength to overcome things. Uh, good luck, Jonathan, convoke uh, a constitutional conference. And this government came in power and has done to that constitutional conference report. If we are to start uh, this uh, issue of restructuring, let the government, if they are not making use of that report, let them convoke another national constitutional conference where everybody will be represented, all the whole ethnic groups in Nigeria will be represented. All right, uh, Chief uh, yeah, Nathaniel, yeah, if you check your time, we are approaching. That will guide us. Th th thank you, sir. We are approaching 10 o'clock. We need to take a break for the 10 o'clock news. Uh, Madam Bill, in one second. Peace to all Nigerians is let's appreciate one another. Let's cut the table and dialogue so that we can discuss whatever grievances that we have. But most importantly, uh, you see, the people look at no, no comprise of three zones that they, they, you know, are being used now, isn't it? So you can look and compare north and say you are comparing north with southwest, or north with uh, southeast, or north with south south. If, if you are comparing, you compare northeast with southeast, or something of that nature. So let's get this very clear okay. uh, in our mind. Uh, all right, uh, Madam uh, Bill, I say a big thank you to you, you speaking to us from Kaduna, and of course, uh, High Chief Nathaniel Luzoma, who is in the kitty. Honorable Wale Osho, I also say thank you, thank you to you, thanks to you uh, from joining, for joining us from Lagos. Uh, thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, yes, uh, that's the first part, the first half of the Citizens Forum, Daybreak Show, Rock City 101.9 FM. We will be back to analyze, to examine the position of these three Nigerians. One from Lagos representing the Afeni Ferry Renewal Group, a group that is believed to be Southwest inclined. Honorable Wale Oshun is the chairman. Madam Ibrahim Bill is the spokesperson of the umbrella body for the North, the entire North Iowa Consultative Forum. And High Chief Nathaniel Uzoma in Ekiti is the president of the Southwest Zone, or Anese. We'll be back after the 10 o'clock news. Listening to us on Rock City 101.9 FM, the Daybreak Show Citizens Forum this morning. Uh, yes, we did what we call or call Wazobia. Yes, uh, through the three different ethnic group in the country. That itself is an argument that is raging on in the country. I'm sure one of our uh, respected caller will say he does not belong to any of these three. Uh, as an Akwai Bomite and Anan uh, Efik does not belong, it's not, was not represented by any of these three groups. That is the diversity really of the country and ensuring that we keep that diversity as united as we can to give us peace is the issue we are really looking at and that is what is given some opportunity i don't want to say some opportunist but given some people the opportunity 
to agitate rightly or wrongly, aggressively or otherwise, and then it becomes a debate, it becomes a national interest, just like we are looking at this morning. We had Honorable Wale Oshun, who is the chairman of the Aferiferi Renewal Group. Yes, that's one social cultural group from the Yoruba ethnic group, the Southwest region. Uh, he spoke with us from Lagos. We also had Malam Ibrahim Biu. Um, he's from the Northeast, specifically from Bono State, but he was speaking to us this morning from Kaduna uh, as the spokesperson of the Arewa Consultative Forum, that's the umbrella body of the, all the groups in the 19 northern states and of course from Ekiti we had Chief Nathaniel Uzoma, he is the president of Oanese Ndigbo Southwest. Different opinion uh, really but one thing that showed is that um, every group is not satisfied with what is going on in the country. Every group has a complaint or the order or two to give about the Nigerian state. That's what appears to. And we may not have, well, agree at some of this position. For example, the question of who is marginalizing who or who are those being marginalized. Again, like I said, the Yorubas could find it comfortable to say, okay, they are marginalizing us or this is the group that is marginalizing us. But that same group that we think is marginalized, or, for example, in the north, the entire 19 state is graded as the north or northern Nigeria. But believe it, the northern Nigeria is not just made up of the Hausa or the Fulani Hausa, like you said. There are several other tribes that consider themselves as important as major and sometimes minority. We have the Dukums in Taraba State. There are so many there. And of course, for a state like Plateau State, the Birons, the Lantang, the Wase. Uh, the Basa people are also there. In Niger, you can't believe it, or the North Central Kogi state, we all know what uh, it means, the Piras, the you know, Kenes, the Galas. Uh, so it's an unending agitator, an unending positioning of the different groups. All right, we'll turn over the microphone to you. Let's get what you think about issues raised your conclusion, your summary of the different positions or all the positions as it were, 0809-868744 and 0909-146-9670 for those who prefer the telephone. People represent me. So I listen to them. I was listening to a music. They don't represent we, the minorities. And then um, let me classify them. You see, daily after listening to them, I found out that if I was to scholar, view is number one. Coherent, beautiful, intelligent, he didn't use vulgar words, and he was factual, he didn't miss his words. The second person is the Assembly Fireman, the Yoruba man. The last person is the Hebrew man, who was incoherent, was telling us falsehood. This is what happens when you don't allow intellectuals to lead organization. This is what happens. When it's only money, because you can spare, sell spare parts and cosmetics that have money, you can go and represent the people. I expect something, someone more intelligent than that. I'm sorry to use that word. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Someone like in the abuse class to, to have represented the evil very well. Because in that context, the other man won. Let us not be biased. The other man won because he was very coherent. Yeah, incidentally, Dr. Kong, I, I don't think we created any contest. There was no, no, no contest. No, I'm telling you, you know, me as an outsider of that three, of those three groups. So what I want was the contest. And I wanted which one do I belong to. And I seem to uh, accept what the other man said. That's the point I'm making. I'm an outsider. I don't belong to any of those groups. So next time around, let us find people who can represent us well and talk coherently. So at any point in time, look at what about the zoning. If you have a unity government in this country, it's a liberal man. Have we who started a unity government so that it can send the uh, educated liberal people to Sokoto to invite this trade? These are the issues we don't want to talk about, and this is not drag and mouth to talk about. Thank you very much. All right. 
again, please, no Hello. insult, no abuse. Hello, Mr. Adele. Good morning. Oh, good morning. A good journalistic and competent Nigeria. From the interview, we can just see a lot of things. And we can say the problem is after. Now, oh, sorry, my name is Paula Uluwabi. I'm calling from Bath, Allah Bekuta. Okay, I can say the problem is after. Judging from the way they are spoken, the three of them, first, they spoke of marginalization. Here we can see that there is no group that is not marginalized, whether now or before. Two, they spoke of further state creation. Three, the, the, that the Igbo announcer claim enterprise, that is group business people, who do business anywhere, they, they, uh, they, they, they find themselves, and ready to protect the peace of such an area. From all this and all that, from what can you see from Ben Tazim, we can see that all the major tribes, all the tribes in, in the country still want to go at it. That is the hallmark of the interview. The country is started with nationalist struggle, be independent, and we are now ending it in separate agitation. We will not want to go the way of, 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 of Angola in the seventies after their independence. Nigeria is better staff to remain together as one entity. That is our glory. And to further call for state creation, why the existing ones are not viable can be further botanization of our geographical policy, which is not at our country. Thank you very much. Thank you for keeping to the time precisely. All right, your call next. Hello. Hello, Dele. How are you, my brother? Right, thank you, sir. Yeah, my name is Honorable Larry Jaji Larija. I'm calling for post Yes, I've had you know, the submission of uh, our brother Nathaniel. Uh, but I still believe that everything boils down to the same thing. Uh, Nobody is, you know, really supporting as far as I'm concerned, not know what he did. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, uh, we, we can still dialogue. Everything boils down to the fact that we need to structure Nigeria. We need to really develop power to stay. I'm telling you, if Kano has an opportunity to be in control of the I mean, there won't be all this wala that we are facing because he knows quite right that he will know how to develop his way. I mean, he's reaching very well with the little resources that he has and he's going to take either turn to pass, etc. You need to weaken the sector and make sure that we, 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 we develop power to the state. Let's have the vision of the whole of all. But uh, they did very well when they had the opportunity of Western region. There were a lot of development. And people don't understand that. Sorry. There's going to be development, there's going to be uh, I mean, uh, competition uh, that won't have any political instability. So the thing just boils down that let us sit down and have a conference. If possible, let us discuss this constitution that was given to us the other time. That's the way a new constitution that will benefit all of us. Let us see how we can, you know, sit together as well, husband and wife, happily, harmoniously. Let me allow other people to call today. God bless you, my brother. God bless Nigeria. 08098687344. Your turn to speak. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. Yeah, I'm Matumba Adebo. Thank you. Our submission is that the, for, for peace to reign and for unity of the country to be preserved, the United States should be equal. As we have in the North, 19, we should also have 19 in the South. The local governments also should be equal. Whatever the number in the north you know, should also reflect in the south. And we should have that uh, in your political source enshrined the constitution, the new constitution we are talking for, about, and Nigeria be structured. So that it will be like what it was that progressed properly in the 60s. Thank you. Thank you, too. Okay, let's. Uh had your call in about uh, six years. Ola Aniba Shamu is the name calling from Azeo Kuta. Nice having you. I listened intently. Am I on here, please? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I listened intently to the trial between resource people that you called out to. Believe you me, for the next hundred years, and I repeat, if not more, if the status quo as it is, is what we are going to stay on. We will continue to have this debate as it is today, and as it has been, and it may likely be, on an ad infinitum basis. As long as we have chosen 
or we are still not committed to removing that unitary, as in terms of unit, unitary federalism, everybody, every tribe, everybody will still be desperate to head the capacity to rule Nigeria with the belief that they will be in control and use their power to the best of their opportunities around them. Let us decentralize the power. If we don't do it, you will never get to the point where people can be responsible for themselves and forget about the presidency. Listen to what Olumide analyzed from that Johannes man. Listen to the analysis. He was a little bit happy when you talked about leadership, but he was quick to get what you are trying to arrive at. This is not being sentimental. Listen to the analysis again. You will understand that the center point in Abuja is the problem. And people believe when they are able to control that place, it will resolve their problem. But that is just a myopic view. We have all those structural defects. Decentralize, let people be responsible for themselves and go for the juggernauts at their own districts. And you will remove the cutthroat, disastrous competition Thank you. in Nigeria of today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we are moving. I wonder one Nigeria, this one's from Olushegun. I wonder what Nigeria we claim to be preaching if we can't live peacefully in any part of the country. United we stand, divided we fall. Olushegun sent this one, some point with a wrong method. Olushegun said, Hanese should ask questions from their past and present leaders of how they are or where they are and what they have become. Will you share send this one? Have you, Ohaneze, dialogued with your child, calling himself a supreme leader in the first place? You failed to warn and caution him. Will you share send this one? War or crisis is not bread and butter. Peace and peaceful coexistence is what we need. Will you share send this one? How do we come once and conclude on the submission of marginalization? Everyone cannot have it's the same way the reason uh, this is also coming from Molly Shegun. I'll rather say sincerity sacrifice commitment and endurance is the way we all must go for all to live in peace and harmony we all must do the needful then what are the yastik of your marginalization what are the points after the agitation whatever it is violence can't achieve it Yemi Davinci sent this one. Does the claim of marginalization confer a moral right for IPOM and Kanu to be openly seditious? My opinion is no. Yemi Davinci sent this one. Here is the issue. Why has Igbo men, the Igbo men which shared constitution with committees over the years, not put referendum in it? Oshumu Iwa Fatai. BIE was fantastic. Also, the Afen Ferryman. Mr. Nathaniel was somewhat ob obese with anger. Restructuring will surely and danger and danger restructuring and that's not so clear uh, the short code messages uh, okay yeah let's go back to the calls for now okay so we we'll check your calls out two minutes maximum allocated hello hello good morning good morning Good morning. Uh, sorry, you have to call back. Have that radio switched off. I'm sorry about that. We can't continue with the call. Next call. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you. This is Alabanyos. Um, I thought during uh, really we call um, from the north when you said uh, the governorship of. Uh, I mean, yeah, he, he googled, but I don't want to interrupt, but I understand he was trying to make a point. And if you are following him, you will understand the point he's trying to make, even though he cited a wrong his citation. Pronouncement was, his pronouncement was very wrong, and uh, he, I thought he was correcting them. All right, now, thank you. Yes, marginalization is everywhere. I thought we will admit that the uh, North imposes itself on others. 
they thought in the north is that they were born to rule. How but did they impose themselves? Pardon? How did the north impose itself? Okay, I tell you. Uh, Kanu, Kanu State, has 44 local governments. And because had only 20. From Kanu State, Giga was healed out. And uh, Giga, 27 uh, local governments. While Kanu State retained the original local government. And Lagos population is by far, by far more than that of uh, Kanu. Still remain at 20 with a 20 local government. That was the time that the uh, state had 30 local government. But uh, these, um, our, uh, our rulers in the middle now still need to 15. Out of agitation, they increase it to 20. That's not marginalization. All right, thank so, you, sir. Well, uh, the, the, the solution will be please, let us. Uh, uh, Iran uh, to and then your job. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. But a time will come. I tell you, from the religious aspect, when uh, the 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 ghost in uh, oppressed now, we turn back. All right. Thank you. You have your two minutes up already. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, we should be able to add two calls and see if messages will come during that period, we'll check it out. We have less than seven minutes to do this. Hello. 0809-8687344. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. I'm coming to call the colleague from my Two minutes, counting. Um, good morning, Dino. Thank you. Um, the issue of marginalization I can just speak in this way that everything starts from our, from our home. Even in our home, as a family. We do, we, we do marginalize our time. And when we have the credit leader, that don't have the credit that don't have the credit or interest of the family or so, in this country, that's the only way you can help them. God bless you. Yes, last call. Hello? 909 Hello? 08... Okay, you are on. Hello? Morning. Good morning. Your two minutes is counting. Good morning. Just kick off. Thank you. Uh, actually, my own contribution is that without being seen, I can see that the only tribe that uphold the unity of Nigeria is Yoruba. And that is why you could see this morning when the three people were talking, I could imagine that the Hamuta, they are blaming the people. Why the people? They are also blaming the Yoruba. But the left Yoruba. Now, to be objective, what has the Mr. B or what his name is? He said something. You can't compare the population of the houses with that of any particular tribe in this country. And another thing is that whenever we talk of a uh, tribe, we normally forget that they divide this country into two Let us assume, when we talk of North, people forget that we have North West, North Central, and North East. But here we are, we have South West, South East, South West belongs to Yoruba, South East belongs to Yoruba, and South West belongs to other tribes. So, that is the problem. I think, the, if I want to conclude now, I think we should have a kind of round table. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. All right, let's check the messages if there are any in there. Oh, what's the tweet? Yeah, Mr. Da Vinci sent this one. I agree with our get your guest on one thing. For Nigeria to survive and develop, we need a new constitution that is not unitary. May of God, morning to you in the studio. Well, in a country where there is criticism, sentimentalism, discrimination, and so on, it is obvious that um, we can't find something like this wanting. We need restructuring and amendment of our constitu constitution. And also the necessity of peaceful coexistence among ourselves should be preached. More so on the government's part, there should be decentralization. Majority of our leaders are centralized in one side, which is not to be so. We want, we don't want monopoly of power and knowledge again. God bless Nigeria, Ogun State, Aito, and Rock City FM. Yemi Da Vinci sent this one. I think in a way, some of the rantings of Inam Dikano resonate with the majority of Indigo, but the channel is too chaotic. The Southeast may or may not be feels marginalized in terms of infrastructure, but secession would not bring the required bulldozers. An Igbo presidency will quieten a lot of these agitations, but sadly, that will only show the hypocrisy of the Igbo elite. Uh, Mayor, Royal Ambassador, the three doors are spoken well, but the solution is coming to a round table for a dialogue, and we should have a brand new constitution. Good morning. Uh, Royal Ambassador also sent this one. My opinion is that Northerners are part Mongers are always at the favor of the national benefit, while other groups are being marginalized. Uh, let's see if I have short code messages. Okay, we'll go back. And uh, now, the like, that's the them. end. That's as far as we will be able to go this morning. We we'll say a big thank you to everybody who've been there, who've made their contribution. I say God bless you all, and of course, to those we interviewed earlier on, Malam Ibrahim Biu of the Arewa Consultative Forum. He joined us from Kaduna. However, Wale Oshun from the Afen Ferry Renewal Group, who joined from Lagos, and Chief Nachanel Uzoma of the Oaneze Undigbo, who also joined from Ikiti. I say God bless you all. God bless Nigeria. And God bless Rock City. Daily, I your do is my name.